Welcome, my name is Jose Liste. I am a technical marketing engineer, part of Cisco's Mass Scale Infrastructure Group. And my job here today is to go over the, the recent innovations for SR that has been released in iOS XR 7.2.1. The presentation will be broken into three buckets where we will start from the IGP related innovations. We'll talk about SR PCE or path computation element innovations. And lastly, SR traffic engineering. Let's move on to the first bucket. Many of you are aware, and we have been shipping uh, FlexAlgo for quite a few releases already. In 7.2.1, we introduced the latest enhancements to FlexAlgo, where we have implemented a new FlexAlgo prefix metric sub TLV. And what that allows me to do is to benefit from the simplicity of FlexAlgo, even in a multi-domain or multi-level environment, where by having propagation or between levels or redistribution between domains of having a optimum end-to-end -end path computed by the IGP. So the combination of the leaking of the prefix um, with the FlexAlgo label and or the redistribution and having the FlexAlgo metric, it will allow a router in a particular uh, process or domain like router number one, be able to select the optimum ABR, either two or five, to reach a destination in another domain or area and remain optimum. So in this particular case, we're showing two processes or uh, ISIS A or B, or two levels, level two, level one, where router number one is trying to reach router number three uh, along the shortest path using FlexAlgo 128. And FlexAlgo 128 in this case may be minimizing the, the delay. So the key job here is to let router one pick the right ABR. With the metrics which are shown on the slide, which are the, uh, the link delay metrics, the optimum ABR to choose is to go via six, directly connected router, onto my way of ABR number five. And with this router, I can achieve the lowest end-to-end -end delay, uh, eight plus nine plus 11. And that being less, that if I, if I would gone via two, would have been 10 plus 23. The flex algo metric and the extension with the sub TLV, um, we can now compute paths that are optimum end to end, that they are simple, that they are very efficient. Only one label will allow me to go between domains. And this is a iOS XR 7.2.1 functionality. From the configuration perspective, you will just enable the CLI shown uh, under your flex algo configuration for the router uh, for for the routers in your um, in your ISIS process for FlexAlgo 128 as an example. Moving on to the second feature, uh, we're going to talk about the rounding of mean delay values. Already for a few releases, we have been allowing our routers in an MPLS network to measure the delay on the links and then propagating that delay into the IGP as a link property. But what actually comes natural is to realize well. There are many cases where I do want to minimize the path, uh, for example, minimizing the delay from source to destination. But in some cases, I have I have paths uh, that are very close to each other from the delay perspective. So in this case, if I want to minimize the delay from zero to nine, I go via five and six. And my cumulative delay will be 20 plus 29 plus 20. But if I were to go over the top, the difference is only two microseconds. So I would really like to stay IC, IP friendly, ECMP aware, and can I realize a end-to-end -end path minimizing the delay that exposes other ECMPs uh, and in a much richer path? So in this case, we configure what we call the latency normalization. And now by normalizing the delay on the links, like for example, the, the link between one and two, and normalizing the delay between uh, five and six, the normalized delay in this case, based on the configuration that I show, will be the value of 33, and therefore router number zero will be able to have an ECMP reach path, minimizing delay from zero to nine. Uh, the third feature is one that uh, uh, introduces the latest type of protection for TILFA. As you're aware, we have been shipping uh, uh, TILFA in Cisco's implementation for ISIS and OSPF with a very rich uh, type of protection like link protection, node protection, local SLG protection. And now what we're doing for OSPF, we are introducing uh, re weighted remote SLG protection. So in this case, you have a PLR like router number two that is trying to protect uh, uh, traffic on an interface 
for example, interface zero connecting to a router number five, but it turns out that interface zero on router number two and interface zero on router number four are in the same conduit. Maybe it's on the same pipe on the street. So they are assigned to the same SRLG. So the idea is to give a notion and give awareness on the PLR to avoid using uh, a remote link that happens to be on the same SRLG as a protected resource, like in this case, interface zero on router number two. So when you do that, you realize a very rich backup path where, uh, as shown by the segmented line, router number two will actually not send the traffic uh, on the link between four and seven, but rather take the path shown in the violet dotted line. So uh, yet again, uh, one more flavor of TILFA uh, to build the family of different protection types. In 7.2.1, we are releasing this last flavor of uh, protection type for OSPF. Uh, this, this protection type has been shipping for ISIS for quite a few releases already. And last, we're going to talk about uh, how can we um, leverage GRE as an outgoing interface for a TILFA backup path. Uh, many deployments out there actually rely on multi-domain or multi-level environments where uh, it happens that the ABRs or the ASBRs are not directly connected. So if you take a look at the picture that we have on the screen, routers two and three are my ABRs. In this case, I'm showing a multi-level designed. And the idea is obviously, of course, to provide TILFA uh, within each level. And because these two ABRs cannot be connected uh, directly to each other, uh, the ability for the IGP to pre-compute a backup path within the level is, is now compromised. So the way how we address this is to allow a GRE tunnel, in this case shown on the screen, um, to be able to use a, as an interface within that level. So therefore the IGP can compute a backup path that leverages that, that low logical interface. Uh, of course, if I'm if I want to use the GRE tunnel as an interface to be leveraged by the level one, then I want the path of that GRE tunnel to traverse uh, the interfaces on my level two, and this is what I show with the thinner dotted line. So yet again, the idea is to provide a very rich multi-level, uh, multi-domain process designed, and yet again, even in situations where you cannot connect the ABRs, which is typically a, a, a non-technical, but rather a fact, we can still allow the IGP to pre-compute backup path within each level and then take care of failures like the failure between two and five or the failure between seven and eight and have pre-computed backup path that will leverage the uh, GRE tunnel between the two ABRs. Well, now we're moving on to SRPC features that are, are shipping with iOS XR 7.2.1. So the first feature we're going to cover is the FlexAlgo aware path computation. Um, this is a new functionality where we allow the operator to enjoy the simplicity and the efficiency of an optimal end-to-end -end path that is encoded with the FlexAlgo uh, uh, labels when you are using, in fact, a multi-domain design. We have a um, two, two processes, uh, the blue and the red process, where uh, we're going to be using FlexAlgo instances, and the objective of this uh, is to actually be able to compute an end-to-end -end, uh, multi-domain path from 0 to 9 that adheres to the definition of the FlexAlgo, and therefore it will be optimized for the criteria given by the FlexAlgo. So let's, let's look at the example in, in a bit more detail. So my two domains, uh, as I said before, they're both running a, a common flex algo. The flex algo may be defined to, in this example, to minimize the delay. The delay on the links is shown on the slides. Um, and we can see from the service perspective, router number nine is advertising a prefix two slash eight via next hop nine with an intention to minimize the, the delay. And that, um, router, um, that BGP update arrives on router number zero. So the gist of this new behavior on the our FlexAlgo aware PCE is that now a PCC like device number zero is going to be capable of saying, well, I would like to have a path that goes to nine adhering to the FlexAlgo 12028. So you can see on step number one, the, the router will issue a request for a path to nine following FlexAlgo 128. 
And what the PC will do in this case, after having learned the FlexAlgo definition and the FlexAlgo uh, prefix sits and who is a member of a particular FlexAlgo, the, the PC will return a label stack of two labels in this case, is the, a, the optimum ABR, minimizing the delay in this case will be ABR router number five with the label 16805, and then subsequently the destination PCC router number nine with the FlexAlgo label of 16809. Key highlight here is I'm, I'm, I'm building a multi-domain path by using FlexAlgo what the routers will do is with the, they will require only a single per domain to reach the next ABR. So highly efficient and very simple uh, path computation done on the PCE and highly efficient for the label stack on the PCC. The second picture feature is uh, we call it the SRT to BGPLU interworking. And how the name describes we're trying to provide yet again a new functionality on the SRPCE that we will allow the PC to compute a path for a local client like router number A in this green domain, where router number A is running on a uh, segment routing enabled domain and no BGPLU. However, this domain is connecting to a legacy already existing core with BGPLU and as well to destination access domains that are also running BGPLU. So the idea here is to simplify my green domain, which is only running plain SR, having an SRPCE where if the router number A needs to send traffic to router number Z on the far right, it will ask the PCE, can you please give me a path to Z? And the PCE will be able to compute the path, basically asking the its client to go to the ASBR of the domain, router X1, with a label stack that when it arrives on X1, it will be cross-connected into, into the label cross-connect entry that will take me across my existing BGPL ULSP in red. So the idea is to make the SRPC smart to return a label stack to A that such that when the that will lead the traffic to the ASBR and the innermost label on, on the on the SR policy will be one that will allow the cross connect to be made onto a BGPL ULSP. The last feature in this bucket we're going to talk is the support for MPLS TELSP on Cisco's SRPCE. Um, Cisco's SRPC has been uh, around already for quite a few years and it actually began its journey as a uh, SR, um, uh, SRTE primarily PCE. We have now allow the SRPC to also be able to comp to perform path computation for uh, legacy MPLSTE RSVP TLSPs. Um, so what you can see now is that the SRPC continues to learn the topology from BGPLS. It can use an application like Cisco Cross Work Optimization Engine to display uh, such topology. It communicates via PSEP with the head ends in the network, but now the network is um, MPLST RSVPT. The idea here is for customers who do require a SR, uh, a PCE in this case to perform a centralized path computation that is required for the use case. And this is very commonly seen in cases where, for example, we want to perform a disjoint path computation for two LSPs on two different head ends. So I have an uh, RSVPT tunnel green, RSVPT tunnel red. I need them to be disjointed. Neither head end can perform the computation. The SRPCE can. And based on PSEP and the um, and the support that has been added to the SRPCE, we can compute the path and return the path to the head ends so that the use case can be realized. Last, we cover the innovations related to SR traffic engineering in iOS XR 7.2.1. Uh, in particular, uh, we will we'll focus our attention in the Perflow ODN, on-demand next hop and Perflow automated steering. And my coworker Jiri will be presenting the innovations related to EVPN over SRTE in this release. The, the objective is to take our intent-based automated story to the next level. Uh, for those of you following automated steering, uh, the ability to steer traffic automatically for a particular service or for a particular destination is something that we have been shipping for a while. But now we're allowing us to take it to the level of the per flow. For that, we introduce a new concept called the per flow policy or PFP per flow SR policy. 
uh, the idea now here is that you could have a per flow policy such as the uh, the blue uh, item I show in router number six, where you could have not just one way to get to a particular uh, endpoint, but you can actually have multiple ways to get to it. So the notion is if I receive a prefix from the network that is coming in with an intent that requires per flow steering, in this case, I'm going to I'm going to semantically describe that intent with a color blue. And for example, I have a BGP route for prefix T via node four with color blue. The ingress router number six in in the lower left hand side will be able to map according to the classification criteria I have configured on the interface to the left of six uh, and identify different applications. All of them are sending traffic to the same prefix. According to the classification criteria, I want to have some of the traffic following a path that minimizes the IGP cost and some of the traffic, for example, that is more latency sensitive that follows the path minimizing the delay uh, to the uh, egress PE number four. And that is the gist of the, the value and the need for doing per flow. Uh, pictorially, you can see this uh, again um, with, a, with a prefix uh, that can be advertised by the network prefix three slash eight, where you have a flow to three slash eight that can just follow the min IGP path. But maybe you have another flow to the same prefix where you need to minimize the, the delay to the destination. Again, what we have here is we have one destination prefix three slash eight and different intents or different flows. So therefore, the need for the per flow uh, uh, automated steering. For those of you who uh, like to see the, the CLI constructs, here we have a CLI slide on how you would configure the on-demand template for a PFP. So in this case, it is, it is the same technology we have been using for ODN before, but now I can define a color 100 or color blue, that in this case, instead of being mapped to a single path, it's gonna be mapped to a in an array of paths. So I have a forward class in iOS XR, which identifies is, is going to be used as the identity of a flow. And then it is going to be tied to another child policy with a color 10 or color 20 that will take me to the intended destination with the intended SLA. In my case, uh, color 10 might be the path that minimizes the IGP and color 20 is the one that minimizes the delay. With these ODN templates, you do not have to configure the policies. You will just, the ODN templates will be triggered once the BGP route arrives. You can also have the per flow policy be configured manually, uh, where you define the policy with color blue, color 100, and a particular endpoint like 1.1.4, and then you can configure the per flow characteristics like I went over in the previous case, but this is for a manual uh, uh, per flow policy. And then you can also have your manual uh, chill, children policies underneath. In this case, I show the child policy for low delay. Please make sure to follow us in our uh, external segment routing hyphen segment hyphen routing dot net website, where you can find the latest news related to segment routing, uh, whether it is conferences, demonstrations, IETF or standard activities, and the latest news overall for SR. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Phil Bedard. Uh, I'm a principal engineer here at Cisco, and I'm going to talk a bit about uh, two features that are related that we added to 721 around egress peer engineering. And those are the addition of the manual EP SID configuration uh, and also the addition of what we call a peer set SID. Uh, previously, we had something called a peer adjacency SID and a peer node SID that are used to direct traffic to specific BGP uh, peer links or BGP peers uh, across multiple links. Uh, what we didn't have was the ability to manually configure those SIDs. Those SIDs were dynamically allocated by the system. Uh, adding manual configuration allows us to uh, keep those manual adjacency SIDs and peer node SIDs as well as the new peer set SIDs across reboots. So they're persistent. And what that really allows me to do is define a SR policy on an ingress node and keep the SID the same across uh, reboots. Uh, it never changes. So I don't necessarily need a dynamic controller to instantiate those policies anymore. I can manually configure those. Uh, the peer set SID is an addition uh, that we've added that allows you to combine adjacency SIDs and node SIDs 
into a set of links or a set of nodes that are addressed with a single SID. And it's really a powerful way, as you see in the example here, of being able to balance traffic between multiple egress peers by addressing that single peer set SID in the SID list. Uh, one more example of how we would use the peer set SID. In this case, I have three egress 1001, 1002, 1003. And normally I may take just a single BGP path to one of those peers, but using SR and using the peer set SID, I can use a single SID as the last SID in that SID list in order to send traffic and load balance traffic across all three of those connections. So as you can see, I build that SID list on the ingress node with the egress node and that egress uh, EPE peer set SID. And the egress node will then use, you know, normal per flow load balancing to load balance traffic to all those three destinations, which allows me a, a very easy way to do that type of traffic engineering without having to manipulate things like BGP uh, best paths or BGP attributes to do so. Uh, when we look at the configuration, it's, it's actually quite simple. The configuration exists within the uh, BGP uh, router context. And all I really do is uh, kind of globally within BGP define what my different peer sets are. I give that an identifier and then an SR index. So where you see index, that's really a segment routing uh, local block index. Um, so I'll utilize the local blocks plus the index and that will be the SID that I'm using to address that uh, specific peer set. And then when I define different neighbors, I define a peer node SID and now I can do that manually, but then I also add a peer set identifier to combine those into the same peer set. So as you can see, I can use this mix of both adjacencies and node SIDs and add those to a specific set to address all of those egress links uh, for traffic that is using that egress node and that peer set identifier. Hello everyone, my name is Ichi Halopka and I will talk about uh, eVPN related features in a 7.2.1 uh, IO6R release. Um, you can see here that I have eVPN and eVPN VPWS on the next hop, which is basically closing our gap on the on the BGP side to provide on the Manhex hop basically to get all the BGP services over the, the programmable transport. Uh, what we are doing with the eVPN and eVPN VPWS, uh, we are uh, coloring the route type one and for EVPN, we are covering also the, the route type three uh, and the color is, uh, specifies uh, the particular SLA. You can see the configuration on the R38 uh, where I have a route policy where basically I'm uh, saying when I, I'm advertising the EVPN route type one or I'm advertising EVPN route type three, I want to set the extended community color. Then I have an extended community color where I decided to use uh, the, the value 100. And then there is uh, only a route policy export, basically attaching the, the route policy to the, uh, to the exporting over the BGP. Then on the left side, you can see very simple configuration for the, for the segment routing. You can see that I have on-demand uh, on demand color 100 and I just specify what I want to, from, to get from the transport uh, when uh, I'm receiving the color 100, basically I'm specifying the, the SLA. Here for this uh, basic example, I'm just uh, saying, okay, I want to follow the, the IGP metric. So basically I will get the, the path based on the, based on the IGP metric. I can verify that particular routes are going through the, the particular uh, traffic engineering policy. So first the BGP, you can see that I'm receiving this route type one and route type three with the color 100 you can see the tech uh, color 100 and then i can go and i can see this show segment routing traffic engineering policy where this particular traffic engineering policy is automatically instantiated and uh, is basically pointing to uh, to uh, to the node 38 and you can see that it's up the next one is evpn e3 with the rt constraint uh, this is a very basic uh, uh, BGP uh, basic, uh, BGP behavior. When we are manipulating with the route targets, we can do same for the for the L3 VPN. But we need to get some some additional stuff for L2, especially when we are doing multi homing. So first, what we want to achieve with the with the eVPN E3. In this case, uh, any device which is uh, marked as a root can talk to to anyone else in the in the network. 
but leaf can talk just to the root, but leaf cannot talk to another leaf. So in our example, H1, H2, H3 can talk to H4, but H1, H2, and H3, they cannot talk to, to each other. You can see that basically we have two sets of the route targets. Uh, I have a blue one, which is one uh, column 1000, uh, which is uh, which is on the on the root side. So you can see that the root is importing and exporting this particular route target because again, a root can talk to, to anyone. And then I have a green one where there is a route target import one column 100. And this particular route target is exporting from the leaf. And you can see on the leaf side that leaf is exporting this green one and importing only the blue one. It's very basic behavior, as I mentioned. But what we have here is additional configuration for the E3 on the leaf side. I have a RT leaf. This is important there to basically provide the MAC address synchronization for the dual home host. You can see that H1 and H3 are dual home. So basically, leaf one and leaf two, they have to synchronize the MAC address of H1 and leaf three and leaf four, they have to synchronize the MAC address for the, for the H3. So basically with this, we will advertise additional information over the BGP and this, this synchronization can, can happen. Uh, there is a, one more additional configuration when I want to prevent like the local uh, local talk over the bridge domain, for example, between H1 and H2 over the leaf two, I'm specifying the split horizon group on the on the interfaces. So basically, locally, I'm preventing uh, the, the communication between H1 and H2. Uh, the last one uh, which I'm bringing here for a 721 is the MAC, uh, MAC freeze auto recovery mechanism. Uh, Mac freeze mechanism is there to protect the uh, EVPN and BGP control plane. And uh, we have uh, this uh, feature there for some time. But uh, well, what, uh, what was missing is uh, the basically to provide some uh, auto recovery mechanism. So here I have a new CLI, uh, which is the reset freeze count interval. This will help to basically uh, recover from, from, permanent, uh, uh, from permanent frozen uh, the MAC address. So uh, that's all from my side at this moment. If you will want to see more information and you will want to uh, get more information about the EVPN, uh, please follow us on e-vpn.io and uh, you will be always up to date. Thank you.